This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Ted Fines, who is the Director of Habitat for Humanity. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. So glad that you're here. Thanks for coming. Um, we're following the social distancing rules. And like I said, being a nonprofit organization, it's tough any time. But add COVID to the mix, and it really uh, makes it very extremely hard. Well, it's become uh, apparent uh, in the last few months that the affordable housing need has become greater. It's crazy. In Northeast Michigan and in the whole state of the Michigan. Yeah, it's really impacted it. Uh, the demand was great before this hit us back in March, February, whenever it showed up. And it's even greater today. And I know that you have an ambitious project goal set for yourself, three houses. Yes. Uh, we're just finishing up uh, a house on Spratt Street in uh, Alpena, one on US 23 in Harrisville. We're just finishing up and we're hoping to break around for three more between now and the end of the year. That's amazing. And how are you doing with volunteers? Volunteers, we're phasing in a little bit at a time. Through this month of, of from June when we brought everyone back from furlough, um, June the 1st we brought everyone back. So we've slowly but surely uh, have brought back at the end of June and now into July more and more uh, volunteers and that's for their safety and ours and you know you guys got double whammy you had the devastating fire yeah had to find a location reopen the restore yes and then you just got up rocking and rolling and COVID yes. came along yeah it, it, it's been fun <laughs> it's been interesting um yes it's been a lot but i i think i couldn't have done it myself and we've had a great staff and even when the staff was on furlough we were communicating at all times. Um, so it's it's really, really important for us to move ahead and understand what our mission is and continue to, to fulfill it to the best of our ability. And the Restore is up and running? Yes, very much so, very much so. And what are the hours for the Restore? Restore is 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, Monday through Friday, and 10 to 2 on Saturdays. Okay, and you're taking donations. We're taking donations. We're also picking up donations. We're also delivering. Uh, so we've been, you know, again, that's been, the demand has been incredible as far as, I think because people started their spring cleaning in March when they yeah. had the time, and April and May, oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden when that, uh, we were receiving literally 10, 20, 30 telephone calls a week. When are you going to open? When are you going to open? Because there, there was such a uh, pent up um, need to get rid of stuff. So um, I know St. Vinny's, I know the Salvation Army, I know Goodwill, and ourselves are just got slammed the last 30 days. And I saw your truck out and about yesterday. Nice looking, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's a beautiful truck. Yes. So what kind of things were, were, are you able to pick up or will you pick up from people's homes? Uh, just about anything and everything that is functional. Um, no clothes, okay. no mattresses, and no box springs, and no tube TVs. Okay. Uh, that's old school, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Um, Some but, people probably don't even know what that is. Yeah, what's a tube TV? <laughs> it's like tube radios or, 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 or turning tables uh, for uh, LPs. Uh, just about everything except for those items. Okay. And so, Ted, what are some of your immediate needs? Money. Money. Uh, donations. Yes. Um, because we have an aggressive uh, schedule yes. to, to build three new affordable homes in one in Harrisville, one in Alpena, one in Rogers City. Uh, it takes time and it takes money. And we have filed for um, some grants through Habitat International has partnered with us to um, go in for a grant f with HUD, about a half million dollars. Okay. And uh, that will help to get us, keep us going as far as our building and our critical home repairs. Yes, that's important too. That's very important, and, and our list is, we've got 38 people 
Wow. 38 families that are on our list right now. And you also do wheelchair ramps. Yes, we've got probably half a dozen right now. Okay. That we're, uh, we're one of the few agencies that are able to uh, fund, find the monies to do this. Now what about um, like volunteers, for example, someone who's a builder, someone who has a specialty skill for oh, landscaping, painting, yeah. housing? Oh, to all of those, all of the above. Okay. All of the above. Um, we need to partner with our contractors. We need to partner with our specialists like landscaping, um, be it carpentry, plumbing, HVAC, whatever. Donate your time, donate your skills. Um, people who are retired, retired electricians, retired plumbers, yes. people who are just interested in using their hands, we are looking for people like that. Okay. It keeps them out of the bars, too. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> and also, just we only have a couple of minutes left, but yeah. I just want to briefly mention how wonderful your old location, former location, looks on Chisholm Street. Yeah, I even got a uh, email from somebody saying, oh, wouldn't it be nice if you didn't rebuild there? <laughs> because we can say, see St. Bernard's so well now. You can. <laughs> you can. I, I had to agree with that. Uh -huh. But our intent, we do, our last board meeting last month, we... Um, established a, a new committee, a Restore Redevelopment Committee, and we have met once. I've met with an additional board member to discuss our options on the site and what we can do. I've met with the city, with the Chamber of Commerce, and we want to include everyone who's interested in the city of Alpena, in Northeast Michigan. I'm just not going to arbitrarily just say, we're going to do this. We want to engage everyone. Build a splash park with it. <laughs> a second splash park. That'd be interesting. Okay, you'll be first in line, okay, right? Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. No, I don't know if that would go over too well. In Probably the not. No. But, um, you know, and it's, it is a beautiful location. It's a yes. wonderful location, and it served yes. you very well. And it's very large, especially when you see it now. I know. It's amazing. And it's like uh, we go all the way from Chisholm all the way back to Lockwood from 5th over. So yes. it's about an acre and a half. It's amazing to see it cleared, and it just looks yeah. so nice. And, and they're and they're and they're still utilizing the community garden. Yes. And uh, we're still providing the water, and some of the neighbors are cutting the lawns Yay. for us, which is great, maintaining it. So we appreciate that. Appreciate and you know, that. we have about one minute left, but that's the wonderful thing about COVID: all the new things that have happened. The people yeah. that are stepping up to the plate. Yeah. People are getting innovative, smarter, working you know, harder coming up with all these ideas. It's amazing. Well, it's always, you know, for every bad thing that happens, there's always some good that comes sure. out of it. I mean, a little simple thing like meetings. How, who would have thought that Zoom would become like Google? I know. We're going to Zoom today rather than you have to Google. And I love it. I don't have yeah. to get dressed up. I don't have yeah. to leave my house. I sit yeah. right there. and I, I can be in my underwear exactly, from the waist up. Exactly, I can be dressed. And I think a lot of people are, but yeah, it's a I know. wonderful thing. Yeah. So it, it has been really, really helpful. In fact, I have a Zoom meeting two or three a week. Uh, and it's just rather than driving 200 miles, we can Zoom. It is. Thank you so much for You're being welcome. here. Please extend our thank you to all of your staff and volunteers yes. for keeping everything going, and we're looking forward to seeing those houses take, start up and get off the ground. Keep us in your prayers. Thank we you. We will. See thank you. you. Thanks. I'll be right back with Annie Hepburn from Alpena Senior Center following these messages. I'm with Annie Hepburn from Relay for Life. Hi, Annie. I introduced you as Alpena Senior Center, and everybody knows you from there, but today we're here to talk about Relay for Life. Right. Um, yes, I'm the event lead for the for the American Cancer Society Relay for Life, and um, as you know, with the COVID and everything um, going on right now, things are changing. Um, and what we want to talk about today is about the Relay for Life. That it is not going to be in August like originally planned. So we had to think about the whole picture about everybody's safety, and we've moved the date to October third. With that being said, though, there's more changes. So most of the relay is going to be done virtually, and all that stuff is still in the works, so I don't really have a lot of information on that. Um, and logistically, we are looking to do the luminaria service ceremony, um, probably still at nighttime for a couple hours, but more of a drive-through. So oh, perfect. I did confirm with the Alpena Mall that we can do it in their parking lot. Again, those logistics are not figured out yet. But we still want to recognize and honor those who are 
you know, fighting the battle on that journey, who've been on the journey, and who've also have passed. So we don't want to forget about those people, as well as we want to recognize the survivors. So we're, we're trying to think about those cer ceremonies. Um, it's going to be different this year, but the American Cancer Society is still important. And they're still... And the need for the finances is still there. It's still there. A cancer has not gone away, right? even though we have COVID. Um, research is still needed, as we all know. Um, tr transportation is needed. All those things are still needed. And the American Cancer Society is still doing those programs. It's just in a different format. So will it be a team event again? Yes, yep. So we still have teams. And if people are still interested in joining or developing a team, they can contact me um, at my home phone, and I can share that at the end. Okay. And, um, you know, donations, you can do that online through the Relay for Life for Northeast Michigan. All those funds would, you know, be coming to our relay, which is not just Alpena County, it's Presque Hill, all the surrounding counties. And, you know, the best part about Relay was the stories that were told, the names that were read, the camaraderie, and um, everyone joining together for a common cause. How are you going to recreate that virtually? So some other areas have done that, so I still have to do some Zoom meetings to okay. learn how we can do that. Um, but pe like teams can you know, do their own things and do that virtually on Facebook, like do a Facebook Live and get the energy still going. Okay. Um, so it, it's probably not gonna be a 12 hour or 24 hour, but there might be, you know, we say from two to eight on October 3rd, this is what we're gonna do. So people can see those live um, opportunities. The, ceremony for luminaria and the survivors is where we kind of want to see how we can do that live yes. at that time and maybe still read the names live oh, perfect. Um, you know people aren't going to want to sign on for an hour or two hours right. but maybe for a little bit of time to just see um and hear what's going on so those logistics i said is still up in the air but I, we still have to do something and um, you know, as a committee, we're still trying to figure that out, and we don't know where the numbers are going to go with COVID or what's next, but this is our plan for now. So give me an idea, Annie, of some of the wonderful things that the American Cancer Society does for those who are affected by cancer. So there's, obviously, they continue to the research. There's support, so you can always call if you get a new diagnosis or if you're struggling through a diagnosis. Um, or wanting to learn more about cancer in general and specific kinds, you can call the American Cancer Society and they you know, can mail you tools or talk you through things. Um, they, I'm just trying to, so right now they have the online support. It's, okay. it's not gone away. Okay, good. Nothing has changed from the American Cancer Society level that okay. people have looked into before. So as far as volunteers for Relay for Life, because you don't know exactly what it's going to look like, the best way for someone to volunteer is get a team together, get your friends together, start raising money. I mean, no, we can't really do big events or anything, but become creative. Think of ideas and ways to raise money so that you can turn it over um, on October 3rd with your team. Right, and we are looking at um, some fundraisers. So uh, again, those are, you know, what can we do? What can't we do? How can we do it safely? We just need to keep in mind everybody's safety. Right. Um, and we know that people with cancer are vulnerable with, Ill, you know, chronic, they can become more ill. Um, so we have to watch that. And we want to keep that in mind. But absolutely, donations, if a business wants to make a sponsor, be a sponsor, they can do that. Family members can be a sponsor. You know, you can um, have a sponsorship in your loved one's name. There's all, there's so many options. To and how do we find that. out about those options, Annie? So you can contact me. Okay. Again, my phone number is 989-766-8514. Okay. Or email me at ajhepburn, H-E-P-B-U-R-N, at yahoo.com. Okay. Easy way to get a hold of you. And I know that, um, like Connie's Angels, I keep seeing where she's doing events and doing things. And, mm -hmm. and um, so there's a lot of teams out there that are still going, still raising money because they know how important Relay for Life is. Right, and we also have a Facebook page for oh, okay. um, Relay for Life for Northeast Michigan. So you can check out things there. Right now there's a Spark My Hope campaign going on. Um, so I just did a video with a sparkler to encourage people to oh, spark yeah. my hope and, and keep the... American Cancer Society in your mind and, and the Relay for Life in your mind and let's keep that alive. So a team could get together and um, offer an online auction for items too, something fun like that. 
mm -hmm. uh, just all kinds of ideas out there. And like I was talking with our guests before, the, if there's anything good about COVID, which there isn't, but the ideas and the solutions and the problem solving and the things that are coming out of it and people stepping up to the plate and helping others, it's amazing. It, it is, and, and as you said earlier, you just, we have to be creative. It's not the normal way we do things, and that's, and change is hard. We know that change yes. is hard for everybody. Um, but we have to change, and we need to keep it going. So um, that's why virtual is kind of the new way, um, and we need to learn how that works. <laughs> so. Okay, so October 3rd, once again, go on the Facebook page or call you again and your number one more time, Annie. 989-766-8514. And thank you, please, and thank you, committee, for still sticking together and uh, making this event another successful event for Northern Michigan to help the people in our area that need the help. You're welcome, and we are looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Annie. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College. I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning, Brenda Herman, executive director of the ACC Foundation. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you. Good morning, Don. So we have the Scramble for Scholarships coming up soon. And uh, why don't you share with the viewers some of the highlights? Sure, we do. We have our um, 25th annual Robert M. Grana Memorial Scramble for Scholarships. Um, going into our 25th year, this event has been um, a large fundraiser for supporting scholarships for ACC students. Uh, this year the event will be held on August 15th out at River's Edge Golf Club, um, proudly supported by Besser Company yes. and several other local businesses that sponsor the event that helped to make it so successful. Um, we're looking forward to um, hopefully a close to 100 golfers is usually what we get each year. Um, teams are starting to roll in. Every day we're seeing new team registration, so if there's any viewers out there that like to golf and would like to participate, um, feel free to give us a call at the ACC Foundation office or um, the River's Edge Golf Club has information as well. But it's just a fun day, a golf scramble. Um, you don't have to be a great golfer to play and have fun. Um, we have some raffles and prizes and things like that, a good day of golf and um, a little lunch on the turn and um, <laughs> good way to support our students. Absolutely. 25 years, that's a, that's a wonderful legacy. Uh, we is. thank uh, Tim and uh, Sue Fitzpatrick for the uh, use of their golf course. Absolutely. And, and, uh, over those 25 years, do you have any sense for how much uh, has been generated for scholarships for ACC students? Yeah, we have close to $400,000 that have been uh, raised in those 25 years uh, just from the event for scholarships. And, um, and all that money just goes right back out into scholarships of various forms. Um, the foundation board votes every year how they want to allocate that money to scholarships. Sometimes it's for non-traditional students, sometimes they're departmental scholarships, Scholarships. Sometimes they're just for students most in need, um, but all that, all the proceeds from the event go right back to our students. Um, and scholarships are so necessary for ACC students. Over 90% of ACC students receive some form of financial aid, um, whether it's federal financial aid or private scholarships or whatnot. And it's just crucial um, for them to be successful and able to not have to worry about uh, the financial part of their education. That is such a... Um compelling stat, 90% of our students will receive some form of financial aid or scholarship support, yes. in some cases both. Yes, in many cases both, yes. Um, and I've had students sitting in my office uh, that really, if, if one scholarship didn't come through, it would break the whole deal for them, that they wouldn't be able to afford uh, attending. And uh, as you know, getting a college education uh, can really improve somebody's life. And oh. Um, you know, create that stability, get them a job that uh, can help take care of them and their family. Absolutely. I mean, we see it every day, and it's one of the most beautiful aspects of our work is a transformational uh, aspect of um, um, higher education, especially at a community college level where people maybe are entering into that world. At, this is their first step. 
Absolutely, yeah. And you know, we do have a way th uh, this year and, and every year for folks who are maybe non-golfers, um, but still would like to support scholarships in honor of the 25th anniversary of this special event. We're uh, offering our supporters and, and community folks um, to support the event by sending in a donation of $25. And that money will go right into scholarships for our students. Um, if you're interested in establishing a scholarship of your own, we do have ways that um, alumni, or local community members or, or people who just value higher education uh, can establish their own scholarship through the foundation. Uh, we have two different types of scholarship funds. We have what we call a pass-through scholarship fund, which is basically where a donor would uh, designate a certain amount of money they want to donate annually, and that would just go out uh, in the form of a scholarship to a student or multiple students, depending um, on how much they want to donate and, and what their preferences are. They get to choose the criteria uh, for mm -hmm. what type of a student, whether it's a certain program that they value, whether it's a certain GPA, whether it's a, you know, a single parent or non-traditional student, that's all up to the donor. Uh, our other type of scholarships that we do have available is an endowed scholarship, and that requires a minimum $10,000 donation, but the foundation will invest all that money and we award scholarships from the interest earned on that principal amount. Uh, that scholarship goes on into perpetuity, lasts forever, um, and it grows as, as that fund grows grows, we don't spend all of the interest every year, so it keeps growing and we can eventually award a larger scholarship amount or multiple scholarships from that. That is a wonderful description, um, and thank you. Yeah. What percentage, roughly, would be endowed and, and the pass-through type? Oh, geez. Um, of, the t of the scholarships that we have yes. currently, mm -hmm. um, I would say it's pretty close to 50-50. We probably have a few more endowed scholarships than we do have pass-throughs. Um, and sometimes the pass-through scholarships may only last for a finite amount of time. Mm -hmm. A donor may say, I'm interested in supporting this scholarship, and maybe after five years their you know, financial situation changes. And that's okay. They were able to help for the time that they could. And as long as they communicate that with us so we're not out there publicizing their scholarship when they're, they're not intending to, to donate the money for it. Um, the nice part about the endowed scholarship is that um, if you don't have $10,000 today, the foundation will work with you to work towards that over a period of time. Um, so a lot of times folks will like to set up a scholarship in memory of a loved one who's sure. recently passed and they maybe will use memorial donations from friends and family to start off um, the money for that scholarship. So they may start with, you know, two or three thousand dollars and then they work towards that ten thousand dollar amount. We don't make any scholarship awards until that ten thousand dollar level has been hit because we need to invest that money for um, a minimum of one year in order to get enough interest. The foundation's spending policy is currently a five percent um, spending policy. So a ten thousand dollar scholarship will generate a five hundred. A ten thousand dollar endowed scholarship will generate a five hundred dollar award to a student. Very good, very clear uh, explanation. And uh, we thank all the scholarship donors and um, and especially the endowed scholarship donors. Um, that is a significant commitment and donation. Um, and it supports students. It is, and we are so thankful to all of our scholarship donors, whether they, you know, they all have some connection to the college. Yes. Whether they were students there or they had a loved one, you know, that was part of the college, or, or really they just value higher education. Um, but we have over 200 named scholarship funds at the foundation, and uh, we do like to thank our donors. We put on a luncheon in the spring to say thank you to them. Um, we have our students write thank you notes to them. We try to connect um, donors and students to, so they can see how their money is being used. A very well run operation, uh, and we appreciate it. Uh, and the students do too, thank and you. the donors. So, thank you, Brenda, um, for what you do and what the foundation does. And thank you, folks, for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. With your host, Nancy Smitham, and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.